accounting superstars. This is Professor Don Bush from the Accounting Superstar channel. I've been a professor for about 30 years and a CPA for about that long, and I've got great ways to explain accounting, so you've come to the right place. So today's lesson is for students who are in their very first semester of accounting, probably about their seventh or eighth week of class and learning about accounts receivable. Hey, and by the way, I've got a website, uh, accountingsuperstars.com, where I've got all my videos listed and they're sorted by topic, so it's easy to find. That's accountingsuperstars.com. And I wanna thank all the people that are subscribing to the channel, that's exciting. So let's get started. Now, uh, I've got a little saying here underneath the uh, title. Um, if you do not track what your customers owe, your customers won't do it for you. So it's really important to keep good track of accounts receivable because nobody's going to be doing it for you. Unlike the IRS, if you uh, forget to uh, pay the IRS, they'll let you know. So um, accounts receivable has five basic transactions, five, that is it. And most of them are, are pretty easy. What, the last one's a little tricky, but not too tricky. So here we go. So if you can handle these five basic transactions, you can do this chapter, it's really easy. So here's something that's really important is that uh, we make a sale and oftentimes a customer owes us money um, because they bought a product uh, or a service. And finally, that customer pays, which affects our cash flow. So accounts receivable is critical. So coming down to the first basic transaction, here we go. Basic transaction number one here, selling a product or completing a job. So when we get to it, completes a job for a customer for $50,000, the customer will pay when we get to it in 30 days. So when we get to it, it's not receiving money but they're, uh, but it, the customer's promising to pay in 30 days. So here's when we get to a construction and they're out there working on the job. So here's the journal entry, folks. Accounts receivable gets debited for $50,000. I'm gonna put that in a nice color here. And revenue is credited for 50,000. Now we're crediting revenue because uh, when we get to it, earned their money, they did their job, they completed their work. So it gets posted to the accounts. Uh, accounts receivable gets posted right here on the debit side. And accounts receivable is an asset, nice thing to have. Revenue, revenue is money coming in from doing our job, but the money will come in, in in about 30 days. So now on the balance sheet, accounts receivable goes on the balance sheet right here. It's, it's considered an asset. So there you go, there's the first basic transaction. Let's go down to the second basic transaction. Well, that customer that just bought some uh, or just had the job completed uh, is paying when we get to it some money. All right, so the customer pays when we get to it $10,000. So we're debiting cash because cash is coming in. Whenever uh, cash comes in, list cash first. And then we're crediting accounts receivable for the amount of cash received here. So these get posted into the accounts here. Uh, cash is being debited for 10,000, so here we go. This is transaction number two. And accounts receivable is getting credited, there we go. And that reduces the balance. You see the balance was 50,000, and now it's been reduced by 10, and the customer still owes when we get to it $40,000. So on the balance sheet, you'll see $40,000. So there we go. There's the second basic transaction. Let's go to the third one. So far, so good. So here's an important one and probably one of the trickier ones. Uh, and that is estimating bad debts. Oh boy. Uh, here's the deal, is that when companies sell uh, on account, that is their customers owe money, Oftentimes it's hard to tell if everybody's going to pay. In fact, it oftentimes that not everybody pays and it's hard to tell who it is or who's not going to pay or how much they're not gonna pay. So it's a matter of guessing or estimating. So uh, when we get to a construction, they don't know who's not gonna pay or how much, but they're guessing they probably are not gonna get paid $3,000. So here's the journal entry, folks. We're going to debit bad debt expense for $3,000, and we're going to credit allowance for doubtful accounts for $3,000. There we go. So this allowance for doubtful accounts 
it's called a valuation account or a contra account. Both mean pretty much the same thing. So bad debt expense is debited for 3000 It gets posted to bad debt expense. And I hope you guys know that expenses go on the income statement. And we're going to credit allowance for doubtful accounts for $3,000. And here we go. So there it is. Now, this allowance for doubtful accounts, it shows up on the balance sheet right here. There it is. So accounts receivables, $40,000 from, from before. And uh, if you don't believe me, you can rewind the uh, video and check to see it's 40000 And less allowance for doubtful accounts is 3000 Since this is a credit, we're subtracting it. So the net accounts receivable is $37,000. So what does that mean? So what it means is that the, the probable amount of cash that's going to come in, the, the amount of cash that, that can be reasonably, reasonably expected it will be about 37000 Now, when we get to it, doesn't know this for sure. It's all based on a guess here uh, for this bad debt. Now, there's two ways to figure this out, and that's not the topic of this video, but I've got other videos on this. Uh, but there's two ways, and it's good to know what those two ways are. So net accounts receivable, 37000 the amount that's expected to come in. So there's basic transaction number three. Let's go down to number four. Well, this one hopefully doesn't happen very often, but it's writing off an account. Let's say that when we get to a construction, um, approached the customer and said, hey, you owe us money, you know, you're, you're past due. Uh, come on, can you pay us? And maybe they sent a collection agency after the customer. Maybe they took the customer to, to court and all, all kinds of things, you know, could have happened trying to collect the money. And it, it looks like the customer just can't pay, never will pay, just can't pay. They're, the customer's going out of business. So when we get to a construction has to kind of admit defeat at a point and say, hey, it's not worth our time to pursue this anymore. We're, we're just not going to collect the money. It's really unfortunate, but it's the way it is. So here's how we write off the account. What we do is we debit allowance for doubtful accounts for a thousand and we credit accounts receivable for a thousand. So we're reducing accounts receivable. So the allowance for doubtful accounts is being credited right here. It is. It's being put into that account and um, accounts receivable is being credited for 1000 there we go and uh, for that allowance for doubtful accounts if I said credit I meant debit so here's what's happening is accounts receivable is being reduced rather than being 40,000 now it's only 39,000 and allowance for doubtful accounts is being reduced also. And that's one of the purposes of the allowance for doubtful accounts. It's to be used up writing off accounts. And so that changes the balance sheet a little bit. So accounts receivable ends up being 39,000, same thing as the balance down here, minus the allowance for doubtful accounts right here. And the net accounts receivable is 37,000. Now here's something really weird is that this net accounts receivable after writing off an account is 37,000. But you know what? Before we wrote off the account, it was also 37,000. Look at that. Kind of a weird thing. It, it takes a little getting used to, uh, but it, it works out that way. When you write off an account, it does not affect the net receivable. And a big reason is, is the net receivable is the amount of cash that you're expecting to uh, collect. And that hasn't changed. Going down to the very last basic transaction, here we go. And this one is probably the most complicated. And, and the reason why it's the most complicated is because it comes in two parts and it, it always comes in two parts like this. So what's going on is that customer back in transaction four that couldn't afford to pay, that was never going to pay, that was insolvent and bankrupt, well, guess what? Out, out of the blue, big surprise, they come into the office one day and they pay us. It's like, wow, where'd this money come from? Uh, but thank goodness for that. So what we have to do, transaction uh, 5A here, the first one, we have to write them back in. In other words, what we're doing is we're taking the transaction that we did up here and we're reversing it. Here's where we wrote them off. Let's write them back in. So we just do the opposite. 
You might say, why do you have to write them back in? Well, there's a reason why you have to. It, we have to make sure that their account receivable is all cleared out. and So that's what we do. We um, reverse it out here. So we wrote the people back in, okay? And then the next entry, 5B here, that's where we record the cash. So on one hand, accounts receivable is being increased, and then just a moment later, it's being decreased. But it's the way it works. It's pretty easy. So the way to remember it is, first, first entry, reverse out the write-off. Reverse out the write-off. The second entry, record the cash. So the second entry is pretty typical. So coming down to the uh, T accounts here. So uh, accounts receivable being written back in right there. There you go. And allowance for doubtful accounts being written back in. Uh, here we go, right there. And cash being collected. I've got a, a cash account right down there. So cash uh, being collected. And finally, accounts receivable being reduced because the customer is paying us. Thank goodness. All right. And so uh, the balance sheet is going to change a bit here. The, the balance for accounts receivable ends up being 39000 right there. And we'll just put 39000 on the balance sheet. Allowance for doubtful accounts is 3000 So we'll minus out 3000 And so the net accounts receivable is going to be 36000 So folks, if I went a little too fast for you, just rewind and watch it again. But these are the five, the five basic transactions for accounts receivable. If you can do these five transactions, you can do like 99% of accounts receivable. And it's probably about 99% of your chapter two, at least the, the homework. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you enjoyed it. And if, if you did, if it helped you out, let me know. Uh, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. That way I'll make more of these videos. Also in the comments, if you want to, you know, list some topics that are giving me a hard time, let me know and I'll make a video for you. So until next time, over and out.